one of the important things that, that we look at is like how do we work within our communities to help uh, make them better places to live. One of the problems we identify that we can be involved in is basically our, our basic health and um, some people have advocated for putting chemicals in the water to make us all healthier and today we've got Rick Horowitz from Fluoride Free Portsmouth to tell you about the, the real story behind uh, fluoride and what to do to keep it out of your community. Hey, how many people here know anything about fluoride? Anybody? Okay, if you want to come on in for a few minutes, I'll talk for about 15 minutes and I'll take questions. How's that sound? Uh, my name is Rick Horowitz. Uh, I, live in I live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and um, I have a little girl about four years old, and when she was about one year old, I discovered that fluoride, the fluoride was in our water, and I also discovered that the fluoride might be doing her great harm. And uh, it was very upsetting to myself and my wife, and we immediately started using bottled water. And uh, we've been using bottled water since, and I started up an effort last fall to try to get the fluoride out of the water in Portsmouth. And um, I'll talk about that uh, and how you might go about that in your communities if you're, if you're uh, interested, if your community has fluoride in the water. Um, <clears throat> to me, fluoride, fluoridated water, uh, first off, is a freedom issue, and I'm sure you guys all recognize that. It really amounts to forced medication of our water. And uh, it's admitted as, as such. The FDA considers fluoride to be a, uh, an unregulated drug, and they explicitly say that. So they're, they're actually putting a drug into our water. They're medicating people um, to various degrees, depending upon how much water you drink. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have some sort of a sensitivity to fluoride, which some people have a particular sensitivity. It doesn't matter if you have uh, kidney disease and you can't uh, clear the fluoride from your system. You're still drinking the same water, and you have little choice other than to spend a bunch of money and effort getting bottled water or buying a rather expensive filter. Uh, your Brita, fil Brita filter doesn't do it. Yes? Here's the thing. A lot of, uh, his, his words get bad. A lot of um, so-called bottled water, a lot of times they cheat and it's often tap water mixed with a few flavor elements. That's true. Have. That's true. If you use bottled water, like we've, been, we've been buying uh, Poland spring water, which isn't completely fluoride free, but they do test it and it tests pretty low. It's like, I think around point one part per million which is compared to like one part per million, which is what the standard fluoridation was until very recently, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. <clears throat> but you're right, some of it is tap water. And some of the spring water probably has high fluoride levels as well, because in some areas there's a high natural concentration of fluoride in the water. So, so would, you say, would you say the brittle water filter is effective by tool finish? Or that? No, it's completely ineffective. It doesn't take any of the fluoride out. There are some filters that do take a lot of the fluoride out, um, but I have concerns about all of them, and I'll tell you what those are. You can decide for yourself whether you have the same concerns. Um, so it's a freedom issue. You know, should we be medicated against our will? I think anyone who's here today is going to say no, and I'm going to say no to that. Uh, but beyond that, uh, it becomes an issue in my mind of do the benefits outweigh the costs? And the costs, not dollar costs, because it's not particularly expensive to fluoridate, but the cost in terms of the health effects that fluoride might be causing, aside from possibly helping our teeth. And <clears throat> from, the, from, what, uh, from what I've read, uh, watching videos, reading books, this is a great source, this book called The Case Against Fluoride. I just brought it so you can kind of browse through it if you'd like. Um, it seems like uh, there's a lot of health issues that um, can be and probably are being caused by fluoride uh, and the evidence for it actually improving teeth and reducing tooth decay is nil. Uh, it appears that there's either no effect, no positive effect, or uh, that the effect is very minimal and I'll, I'll present some of that evidence. Yes? What about strengthening tooth and amyl? Uh, that's what they tell you, but the actual cavity rates, uh, dental decay rates, um, don't seem to indicate that fluoride, fluoride in the water is helping. It may be the case that fluoride in toothpaste, because it's directly applied to the teeth, is helping, but when you're drinking the fluoride, the fluoride doesn't, doesn't touch your teeth for very long, right? You drink it, it goes down, it's gone, and now it's going through your whole system. It's affecting your bones, your brain, your thyroid, and all other organ systems. So fluoride is <clears throat> not at all. It's more effective in a topical level rather than a metabolic level. 
That is that is correct, and that's actually uh, stated by the CDC um, that its that its effect is predominantly topical, but yet they still encourage fluoridation. So. Uh, it's kind of a long story how fluoridation got started. I'll try to give a very brief summary. I'll give it, I'll give it now. Um, fluoride was a, a major pollution problem for industry. Going back to the 1920s, 1930s, talking about the Aluminum Company of America, now Alcoa, producing aluminum, produced a lot of fluoride effluent that went out into the atmosphere. And they had big lawsuit problems with, um, with fluoride going into farms, killing cattle, sickening the people around, destroying farmland. And uh, so they set their scientists uh, at finding some way of dealing with this problem. In addition to them, there was the phosphate fertilizer industry, which is predominantly in Florida. And uh, in the production of phosphate fertilizer, when they, uh, when they uh, purify it, one of the pollutants that comes out is this fluoride stuff. It, it goes up to smokestacks, and they use these wet scrubbers, and it pulls out the fluoride, and it, that's the stuff they take and bring to our communities. That's what we're getting in most of the communities, is the fluoride uh, sort of pollution left over from uh, the, the phosphate fertilizer industry. And it has, in, it, in addition to fluoride, it has lead and mercury and arsenic and radioactive nucleides, including uranium and, radi and radium. And this is what's being put into our water. And uh, those other substances are probably in, in small quantities, but any quantity of those is, is known to be damaging and is admitted to be damaging. So that's being added to our water as well as the fluoride. Um, in addition, a lot of communities that are using fluoride are also now getting it from China. So in addition to getting our own pollution, you, know, you buy products from China and you don't know what you're getting. You know, lead paint on, on kids' toys and melamine and, and baby formula. I don't, trust, I don't trust anything coming from China as far as food. And so now a lot of the fluoride is now being actually brought in from China uh, that's being put in our water. So let me get to the, some of the health issues here and just talk about those briefly. The first one um, is the one that's most visible, and that's dental fluorosis. And <clears throat> here's a picture of reasonably bad dental fluorosis. Um, there's pro this is probably qualifies as, um, as moderate dental fluorosis. And um, I think the number is uh, something like 2% of the population. Let me say I actually have it here. Yes, 2% of the population in America has moderate dental fluorosis. This only comes from fluoride in water. That's the, that's the pure cause. And the vast majority of it in America is <clears throat> from uh, fluoridated water, not naturally fluoridated water, but added, adding the fluoride to the water. So you've got about 6 million Americans that have teeth that look that bad or worse because there's severe and severe fluorosis. Actually, your teeth just start chipping away. They're completely ruined. <clears throat> then there's mild uh, dental fluorosis or very mild dental fluorosis, which uh, the ADA characterizes as purely cosmetic, and I guess it is. Your teeth aren't going to fall out, but uh, it, your teeth, uh, you get white spots, sometimes brown spots. Um, teeth look pretty bad. Uh, if, you're, if you're a child and your teeth look like that, you're probably going to get picked on by your, by your classmates, by your friends. Uh, you know, it can cause psychological damage. And a lot of people, when they grow up and their teeth look like that, they want to get them fixed. And you might have, I, I always wondered for years, you know, what is all this cosmetic dentistry? Every time you pass a dental office, you see cosmetic dentistry. And it's for this. It's for fixing fluoride damaged teeth. That's 98% of what it is. So that's the money trail. That's the money, that's the money trail. And to fix fluoride damaged teeth, you got to put on a, a veneer. They tell us it's cost effective to use fluoride on the teeth because it, it, it helps our teeth, right? But now you've got, the CDC just came out with new numbers, 41% of, of kids between the ages of 12 and 15, so the new cohort of kids coming up, 41% suffers from at least mild dental fluorosis. So 41% of the kids are probably going to, at some point, want to get those teeth fixed. It costs an average of about $10,000 to get your teeth veneered. $10,000, it lasts for a maximum of 10 years. You've got to do it again a second time. Each time they do it, they take off a thin layer of tooth. You've got to do it a third time. Now you're 40 years old, you want to do it a third time. It doesn't work anymore, you've got to get full crowns. So that's $25,000, plus a lot of you know, pain and suffering. So this is, this is definitely not 
safe and effective. So 41% of, of people, I mean, you move that forward, that's 41%, let's say that's about 120 million people times about $45,000 $45, a person. What's that, like $500 billion of teeth? Big Dental. So Big Dental has a motivation to continue this. And Big Dental, I think, has a motivation to continue uh, to avoid lawsuits from this as well. So, you know, if they admitted that fluoride was causing damage, uh, they'd be subject to massive lawsuits, in my opinion. So I think there are, there are motivations there um, <clears throat> to avoid, to, uh, you know, n not sort of admit that fluoride may have been a mistake. <clears throat> um, other other body systems. Fluoride effects on the brain. This one's this one's much worse than uh, fluoride effect on the teeth, in my view. Um, there's been a, a number of different studies uh, on fluoride effects on the brain. The first uh, couple came. There's a, a researcher named Bruce Spittle, New Zealand uh, doctor, uh, and. He, in 1994, he did a review of fluoride articles and he said that there was suggestive evidence, so not definite, but suggestive evidence that chronic fluoride exposure may be associated with cerebral impairment affecting particularly concentration and memory. So you say, okay, well, it's suggestive evidence, maybe it's not real. Well, the next year, uh, a woman named Phyllis Mullinex, who was a, a doctor, researcher, toxicologist, she started up a, uh, a group in uh, Harvard Medical School's dental division, Forsyth uh, Dental Laboratories, and she was the head toxicologist there. She started up this, this division, and she was asked to study fluoride. And she said, well, I don't want to study fluoride. It's been used for 40 years. It's a waste of time. And they said, no, we want you to do a study on it. It's, it needs to be done. So she did this study, and she found, she did studies on lab rats, and she uh, used the equivalent of what would be um, higher fluoride levels than we normally put in the, in the water. We put one part per million, uh, she was testing like 2.5 parts per million equivalent on rats. And she found that prenatal exposure before they were born resulted in 100% of the rats having lifelong hyperactivity disorder. Couldn't be ended. Which, uh, that's pretty frightening. Especially when you look at you know, all the kids that have ADD, ADHD. Um, if, you, if you introduce the fluoride later in life, they all became couch potatoes, basically, is how she described it. Um, to thank her for her research, she was fired from her position. Uh, and that's kind of a continuing theme in this whole fluoride thing. Fluoride's been, been a, protected, uh, a protected medicine for, um, or toxin, however you want to look at it, for uh, 60 years now. It's been protected by the government, protected by certain big business interests for a long, long time. Um, <clears throat> next uh, thing, 1998, a researcher uh, named uh, Julie Varner, let's see, they f she fed rats uh, for one year, one part per million of fluoride in the water, so the same as they put in our water, and um, she found morphological changes in the kidney and brain, morphological is structural changes that you can see on a, a microscope, um, increased uptake of aluminum into the brain and aluminum is known to be a neurotoxin so it increases aluminum uptime and it's and it's been found in conjunction with alzheimer's and it it's was not found in soda right <clears throat> found in soda as well well I, oh, I, right. wanted, I thought i heard that's what i heard it's aluminum is found in soda um right. i wouldn't be surprised because you got aluminum cans and all that acid in the soda it wouldn't surprise me oh and baking soda yeah Yes. Um, baking powder. Baking powder. It's aluminum in the formula. Some of Unless it. you buy a brand that has no aluminum in it. Yeah, it on that's the right. Thing. Baking soda does. <coughs> the no, baking hours. soda is just uh, baking soda. Because there's a, forget the brand, but there's, there's, a, there's a brand that's supposed to be. I think you're right about that. Yeah, it's Rob's Red Mill yes, or some Red Bob's Red Mill. Mill. Yeah, I read this somewhere. Baking right. soda is supposed to be aluminum free. Yeah, you're right about that. I remember reading about that. She also found formation of beta amyloid deposits in the brain. Beta amyloid deposits are what are found in, in uh, people with Alzheimer's. Um, next up, and this, so all these have been on laboratory rats. So you say, all right, well, they're rats, they're not people. Okay, well, the next study, set of studies comes out of China, 
India, Iran, Mexico, predominantly China. There have been 24 human studies, and these have been studies of uh, studying areas where there's high natural concentrations of fluoride. Because in places where there's very high natural concentrations, they know that they, they cause all sorts of damage to, uh, to people, including severe skeletal fluorosis. Do I have a picture of that? No, I don't, sorry. But people are just completely crippled. Their bones, their legs look like this, they're bowed, they're all hunched over completely destroyed. And these are very high levels of natural fluoride. So these countries, um, particularly China, has some areas of very high levels of fluoride. They wanted to study this, so they have been studying this for the last 20 years or so. Um, they don't fluoridate their water. By the way, hardly anyone in the world fluoridates their water. It's the United States, Australia, New Zealand, um, Israel, Hong Kong, parts of, parts of uh, Great Britain. And I think that's about it. There may be one or two other small places. Japan doesn't fluoridate. China doesn't fluoridate. Russia doesn't fluoridate. All of Western Europe, practically, outside of uh, the UK, doesn't fluoridate. Uh, Ireland fluoridates. Um, and the United States fluoridates, about 70%. Some of the Netherlands used to fluoridate, now they don't fluoridate anymore, as of like 35 years ago. Some of them have um, fluoridated salt available. Some of them have fluoride available, but it's not forced. You can gotcha. use it or not. So these, so the studies out of China, what they studied was they looked at comparable towns, one with high fluoride levels, one with low fluoride levels, and they compared uh, their children's IQs, and they found a reduction of up to 10% in children's IQs. 10%, so 100 IQ average going down to 90. Um, and... Uh, the, then this has been repeated in study after study, and the studies were the studies. Um, uh, they also found that the fluoride accumulates in the brain of the fetus, causing damage to the cells and the neurotransmitters. And I imagine they did that from, you know, aborted babies or, or babies from miscarriages. So uh, they know that the damage is happening even before birth in humans. They controlled for these studies. They controlled for lead exposure, iodine exposure, parental education, and income status, and other known factors that may result, uh, that may impact the results. So there are good studies. A lot of, a lot of this, uh, there are a lot of studies and a lot of good studies. Bone fractures. Um, it's important to understand. I'm not a chemist. I took chemistry in college and whatever. And remember about this much of it, but. Fluorine, which is the element that makes up different fluoride compounds, is about the most highly reactive element. Is anyone here like a chemistry, uh, smart in chemistry? It's about the most highly reactive element. It reacts with everything. Uh, so if you take it into your body, this is why it affects so many different body systems. I mean, we're talking about um, brain, um, teeth, bones, uh, connective tissue, joints, thyroid, it's everything. It affects everything in your body. What? Pineal gland, it accumulates in your pineal gland. It may be responsible for sleep disorders. I mean, it's just bad news. Just bad news all around. Um, so bone fractures. So they've done studies on bone fractures. There, there was, in, do you want to ask a question? I just, I want to clarify. So you're saying it's a cumulative poison. Yes, I didn't actually say that, state that, but let me state that. It is a cumulative poison. If you have, if you have normal uh, kidney function, you'll get rid of about 50% of it, and you'll hang on to about 50%. It accumulates in your bones, in your teeth, in your pineal gland, and in your thyroid. So that's, that's why it's especially damaging, even though it might be only present in microscope. That's right. Yeah, you build it up over your entire life, and uh, it's very difficult to get it out of your body. I, I read somewhere that the half-life of removing fluoride from your body, if you stop taking in any more fluoride, is about, I think it was 20 years. A half-life, so ha you get rid of half in 20 years. It's, it calcifies the pineal gland, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It, pre it turns into stone. Yes. Um, so they found an increase... Um, of three times uh, increase in hip fractures in elderly uh, people at a high level, 4.3 parts per million. Now, who did this study? This study was done by the uh, National Research Council. And um, the, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, in uh, I guess every 10 years, they have, to, they have to, by law, run studies on potential toxins. And so back in... Um, 2006, they had to run a study on fluoride. It was just sort of legislatively required by their, by their, you know, their 
their documents that, that govern them. And so they hired the National Research Council to do this study. The National Research Council uh, studied um, 1,100, I think they did an 1,100 page study that they came out with and they studied thousands of existing studies and they came out with certain findings. And one of the findings that they came out with was that at this, at this relatively high level, 4.3 parts per million of fluoride compared to let's say one part per million in, in water, they found a three times uh, increase in hip fractures in elderly. And hip fractures are very severe. I don't know if you know, younger people here know this, but, but they, can, they can kill an older person. A lot of times older people don't recover from that and they end up dying within a couple of years. Um, and they also found a doubling of hip fractures at only 1.5 parts per million. So if you're an older person and you're, uh, let's say you're diabetic, not an unusual circumstance, you're probably drinking twice as much water as the average person. And if you're drinking twice as much water, you're getting twice as much fluoride. So, you know, this is a serious problem. They also found, uh, not NRC, but other researchers said arthritis. Arthritis is exploding in, in uh, the, the amount of arthritis that's being seen. 46 million Americans now have physician diagnosed arthritis. I'm not just saying, you know, my elbow hurts, but actual doctors diagnosed them. But uh, this researcher in 1988, Bet Hellman, senior science editor for Chemical and Engineering Journal, uh, said that um, the symptoms of fluoride caused joint pain are so similar to arthritis that it's very possible that a lot of arthritis suffering is actually due to fluoride uh, toxicity in the joints. Um, next. It's horrible. I know. Um, it's almost as bad as the weather. Is there a happy ending? What? Is there a happy ending? There can be. Uh, yeah, well, there's an improved ending, which is let's try to stop drinking it. Um, but there's some other, there's other things that you may want to try to avoid as well, especially for kids. Especially for kids. Tea, that's right. Yeah, tea has a lot of fluoride in it. Um, naturally. Uh, naturally. Osteosarcoma, which is a bone cancer. Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of controversy over whether fluoride can cause various cancers. Uh, and some people say yes, some people say no. Uh, a doctor, Dr. Elise Basson, in her 2001 Harvard PhD thesis, she came up with a kind of intriguing way of looking at this. What she did was she looked at at uh, various age groups of both boys and girls and she, <clears throat> what she found was that if fluoride is being taken in just regular amounts that we would get from fluoridated, fluoridated water during their boys six to eight year old growth spurt they're five to seven times more likely to get osteosarcoma by the time they're 20 years old. Which is what? It's a bone cancer and it's a very deadly bone cancer as well. About half of them would die from it. Um, so uh, it's it's still you know a small number of kids get this not a lot of kids getting this but it's a very big increase five five to seven times increase. And as, as athletes in a few years past that as athletes they could have brittle bones. It does make your bones more brittle as you get older. Yes, it increases bone fracture risk in all age groups. Um, now th thyroid. Okay, uh, um, both in the United States and in Europe, they used to use fluoride in uh, <clears throat> doses pretty much exactly what, what is put in our water. If you drink eight glasses of water a day, the recommended amount. Um, they used to use fluoride to uh, treat people with hyperthyroidism. This is people with overactive thyroid. So it actually they knew this and they used this for years. They used it in Europe until the 1970s until I guess they, maybe they had more effective medications. They would give it to people that had hyperactive thyroid and it would reduce their thyroid function. But now we have a, uh, a gigantic explosion of hypothyroidism, underactive thyroid. Um, how many people here, you know, if they're either older or have an older relative that's taking thyroid medication? Yeah, I do too, my mother. Um, and it's uh, hypothyroidism mostly. So there are other thyroid diseases, but hypothyroidism. And this has increased tremendously in recent years. How many, how many people have this, this, this uh, illness now because uh, they've been drinking fluoridated water for you know, 40 years or 50 years? Probably a lot. Um, and so uh, the NRC came out with a, re a statement on that too, said that fluoride is uh, they, this is a quote, fluoride is therefore an endocrine disruptor in the broad sense of altering normal endocrine function or response. 
and in humans effects on the thyroid were associated with fluoride exposures uh, that would be uh, and it gives some sort of other measurements here but I equated it if you've got normal iodine levels in your diet and uh, it would be 1.8 parts per million so that compared to one part per million if you have low iodine levels which 11 percent of Americans do then uh, the standard fluoridating uh, levels will cause these uh, thyroid problems according to the NRC so yes and the thyroid is the master gland no it's the pituitary Okay. But the thyroid, if you have, if you have low thyroid, you, you're going to have probably fatigue, hair loss, what's the list? It's a big long list of things. Increased heart disease risk, you'll just feel rotten all the time. Yeah, I mean, just... That's obesity too, right? Yeah, cause obesity, that's right. <clears throat> so, so, okay, fluoride's terrible for you. So what does it do for your teeth? They've been telling us, this is a chart, I kind of hand drew this, it's not completely accurate, but I've actually got the original up here, the real one, you're welcome to take a look at it afterwards. This is a, a chart showing, and there are a lot more countries on here, there are about 20 countries on the original, but I just wanted to get the idea. Different countries, going back to like 1975, 1965, up to the present day, and it's showing the number of decayed uh, DTMF, decayed something, missing uh, teeth, missing or filled teeth. It's basically decayed teeth. So one, three, five, seven, nine teeth. And f these are different countries, fluoridated and non-fluoridated countries. And what you'll see, and you can see it here too, you're not too far away, um, is that everybody kind of started out high and everybody's kind of ending up in the same place. These are all Western European countries, the United States, I think Japan was in here, some other countries. Which is which, you can see all going down. Yeah, they're basically all going down at the same time. And some people have uh, said, the pro-fluoride people have said that there's um, a halo effect, they call it. And they say that, well, if you live in an unfluoridated community in America, well, you're still getting a lot of fluoride because you've got fluoride toothpaste and you're eating foods that have been watered with fluoride, fluoridated water, been treated with fluoride, you're getting fluoride from other sources. And it's probably, yeah, you know, maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but the other point was made, well, in Western Europe, hardly any country fluoridates. So the vast majority of their food is coming from unfluoridated sources. They're not using all this fluoride, and they're getting the same reductions as well. Then there's another one, which I found particularly compelling. I tried to reproduce this one as best as possible as well. This one is showing, they did, a, they did surveys, um, and um, <clears throat> they asked people, do you have very good or excellent teeth. And so it was self-responded. It wasn't you know, analyzed by dentists, but it was self-responded. You kind of know if you have very good or excellent teeth. And what they found was this is fluoride level in the 50 states. So some states have no fluoridation. Some have you know, some communities under fluoride. Some have 100% of their state under fluoride. And this 80% were the respondents for high-income people showing that 80% of high-income people across the board, irrespective of the fluoride level that they were drinking, said they had very good or excellent teeth. And for low-income people, there was more vari variability in it, but a lower level and, again, no relationship to the level of fluoride uh, that was in their water or the number of people who were in fluor drinking fluoridated water. So, I mean, I look at those and I say, it doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot. And when you couple that with the CDC and the ADA admitting that uh, it's really topical application, i.e. brushing your teeth with fluoridated, fluoridated toothpaste that actually does anything and you can spit the rest out, and rinse your mouth out afterwards, uh, it makes you wonder why this fluoride's in our water. So yes. you're, you're saying uh, swallowing fluoride is as good for your teeth as swallowing sunscreen would be to protect you from a sunburn. <clears throat> That's probably that's good. That's a good a good thing. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, you know, I just want. To, uh, uh, please go ahead. Feel free. So, if, why doesn't Fort Smith just stop putting the fluoride in the water? All right. Let me get let me get to that. I wanted to talk about what what we're up against in terms of getting the fluoride out of our water and how it got in there in the first place. Um, <clears throat> Fluoride started, uh, Portsmouth started fluoridating the water in 1973. And um, they did it by the city council at the time put uh, a, a referendum on the ballot 
and um, there was a big marketing campaign by the you know the dental lobby and uh, by the public health lobby to push this through and people fell for it and they voted for it about 55 percent voted for it it was it was basically passed by a by a referendum vote so um, there's a there's a law in New Hampshire that says if you um, want to get the fluoride out of the water or if you're not fluoridated and you want to put fluoride in the water the only way you can do it is by a citizen's petition to get the question on the ballot shall we add fluoride to the water and um, and you need to get 10 percent of the registered voters to uh, sign a petition. I have a petition here today that covers Portsmouth, Greenland, Newington, Newcastle, Rye, and Madbury. If you're in any of those towns, I'd love to get your signature on this. Uh, but you need to get a petition with 10% of the, of the registered voters, not only in Portsmouth in our case, but Portsmouth serves five other communities with water. Where can the viewers uh, contact you to get the petition? Um, we have a website, fluoridefreeportsmouth.com, and you can go there, you can download the petition and mail it in. It has to be hand-signed, or you can sign it right here if you're from any of these towns. But if anybody else wants to do this in their town, um, you're up against the same thing. Uh, there's a law called, um, I can't find it here, but I actually remember it. It's 485, it's RSA 485, 14A, and... Um, it tells you the specific language, but basically you have to have a petition, get it on the ballot. It's been made unbelievably difficult to get this out of the water. Um, so we've been working on a petition. We've got probably about 200, 250 signatures. We need a lot more. Um, we need thousands. So how could people go about getting unfluoridated water if they were living in that region? Okay. Without waiting well, for a petition to possibly change something. Right. We, we, we've resorted to just bottled water, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, is costly and it's a pain to go and get it every, every week. Um, and uh, <clears throat> here are the, the filters that, that will take out most of the fluoride. There's one called activated alumina. Activated alumina? Activated alumina. It's, a, some, it's a, some aluminum oxide. And... Um, I've been a little bit concerned about whether that ends up in the water, whether the aluminum ends up in the water. So we haven't gotten that Where filter. It? Where they sell it? You can look online. There are a lot of companies that sell these. Uh, They're not cheap like a Brita filter. They're at least a you know a few hundred bucks. Uh, um, they also use uh, something called bone char in uh, filters that take out the uh, fluoride. Bone char is what it sounds like. It's charred cow bones, and they grill them up. Turn them into charcoal, and this is this pulls out the fluoride. Now, why does this pull out the fluoride? Well, fluoride ends up in your bones, right? So, charred bones turn out to be good at absorbing fluoride. Uh, and um, but uh, I wasn't, uh, I'm not so keen on drinking uh, charred cow bones. You know, there's uh, this mad cow disease thing. You buy it. All, cow, all so, beef bones have fluoride. <clears throat> they're organic. So, that, so, that's, so that's number two filter that I'm not too happy about. And then the third one, which is probably the best bet in my mind, is reverse osmosis, a reverse osmosis filter. None of these are cheap. They're all in the hundreds to thousands of dollars, but at least a few hundred, I'd say, you could probably get a, a decent you know, reverse osmosis countertop filter. Yeah. Uh, Berkey makes one. Is that good? Berkey, yeah, Berkey sells an activated alumina filter. Oh, okay. They sell oh, sure. one of their, yeah. Is it good? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess. No, I, you know what? It's actually I don't know. prohibited from, I'm from originally from California, <clears throat> and you actually can't have that. There's some sort of law that it can't be mailed to our state, at least. Really? My ex state. <laughs> I don't know. So. Uh, it's, it's not that expensive. About 200, 200 bucks, Berkey? It, you have to add it on to the Berkey filter. It's an yeah. add on, yeah. No, but the the, ray, the whole setup, the cheapest ones are in the 200s, I yeah. think, Berkey. Um, so, anyway, we're doing this petition in uh, in Portsmouth. Um, I suggest that everyone stop drinking the uh, fluoridated water if you can, in one way or another. And, um, oh, I want to point one other thing out. Um, it's actually a couple of things. Excuse me, one second. There, uh, there's a lot of fluoride residue in certain foods. One which Pat mentioned is uh, tea, black tea, and I think green tea as well. All teas except... Um, well, er not herbal teas, yes, typically. Yes, herbal teas as well. Well, it there's probably depends on... There's something called um, yerba... Yerba mate? Yerba mate is the only one that does not have fluoride in it. Why is that? 
<coughs> it must be grown somewhere or it does not take up the Just floor different, floor different, floor it's a different plant, it's, a, it's not a tea plant. <coughs> Um, I'm not sure about mint teas, but a lot of the herbals. Do you think a lot of the herbals? I was under the impression a lot of them didn't. My reading on the internet, just yeah. people looking what they drink. <coughs> I discovered that Worcester, Massachusetts is not fluoridated, so uh, I like polar beverages, polar uh, orange dry and such, and there's seltzers available in New Hampshire. Uh, I will ha occasionally, if I'm going to have soda, it's going to be polar. It sounded like a commercial to me. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we're going to allow that, that sort of commercial. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <clears throat> there are other foods as well. I'm going to, I'm going to go down the list. Um, grapes, um, non-organic grapes, uh, raisins, which come from grapes, apple juice, let's see, what's, oh, dried cereal, like Cheerios, for example. This is like the typical American child's little baby's diet. Right? All the things that you feed little kids. Cheerios, raisins, apple juice. Um, nursery water. Yeah, don't get me started with that. They actually sell fluoridated water for four babies called nursery water. It's unbelievable. Uh, and oh oh right mechanically deboned chicken there's a whole long list but these are some of the major ones mechanically deboned chicken you're like what nuggets. what chicken mcnuggets any the reason is that when they mechanically debone chickens meaning it's done by a machine they're pounding the they're scraping parts of the bone off and the bone dust is ending up in the in the chicken so this mechanically deboned chicken has high levels of fluoride again that would be non-organic chicken uh, well, it depends on whether it's me mechanically deboned, I think. Well, are you saying organic chicken has fluoride in the bones? Uh, probably depends on the, the source. I think the reason a lot of... I think, I think the sources are important because... Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I left out an important point. There's about 120 different pest, pesticides that are used on crops that are fluoride-based. Fluoride was, fluoride is a poison. Here, you can come up here later and look at this if you don't believe me. But uh, fluoride and rat poison, rat and roach poison, uh, rat tack. This is a product that used to be sold, made out of uh, sodium fluoride and uh, roach killer. So this used to be roach and rat killer in the old days, and now it's, um, the, it's put on our crops and it's put in our water. Um, Sorry to depress you all. <laughs> uh, welcome. Cheerios and it's not organic. Um, the grains, any of your grains and your vegetables that are coming to your supermarket that are not organic, they keep them in warehouses and they close the warehouse and they bomb it with fluoride pesticides. So it seeps into everything. That's right. Uh, if you're not sourcing yourself intelligently what you're putting into your body, you can count on it to be fluoride. Well, how's the water, earth, and this campsite area? <laughs> I have no you idea. Have to check on the I'm sure. I don't know. Well, probably well water. You have to look it up online. Look uh, water you know. quality, uh, Lancaster, New Hampshire. Uh -huh. If you Google that, you might find out the natural water quality. Go ahead. Oh, uh, um, do you do you happen to know if uh, Nashua? if they ever fluoridated their water? Because I remember there being a thing about that. I don't know. I know uh, there was a big deal in, uh, in was it Manchester with, uh, was it Manchester? Most of the, the larger was that Concord? areas in uh, New Hampshire are fluoridated. Yeah, probably the larger cities yeah, are probably all fluoridated. Just check online, you'll find it immediately. Okay. Is it? If, if you're not getting fluoride in your water, how much how comparably is food a bad thing? Uh, I think you're probably getting close to as much out of your food as you as as you are out of your uh, water if you're if you're in fluoridated water. I think that's the kind of the range that I've heard. Now, if you're eating mostly organic food, um, you're probably cutting down on that a lot because all these organic all these uh, fluoride-based pesticides are not used on organic crops. So if you're if you're eating organic meats, they're not being fed grains that have been fluoridated. And Pat's exactly right. They use this stuff called sulfuryl fluoride. Uh, that they bomb into, they put them in enclosed areas, and otherwise they're going to get eaten by rats. So they need to do something with these grains in storage, and they bomb them with the fluoride, this sulfuryl fluoride compound, and it ends up Cheerios. On, in Cheerios. I have a I have a brief commercial uh, message here, and it's not I'm not selling anything. It's not commercial. I have started a uh, a website that's not related to fluoride. It's related to freedom, 
and it's called 1776 Action. And the purpose of it is to uh, help people take action on freedom-oriented issues. That's its complete focus. And the way it's going to work is uh, that basically anyone who has an issue that they think needs to be acted on <clears throat> can post that issue. They can post videos. They can describe the issue. They can pick out which uh, legislators that uh, they want to go after if it's, in a, if it's in a legislative committee or whatever. And this is on a federal and a state level. And um, <clears throat> you'll be able to post your issues, and other people will be able will be, basically be able to see them, and watch the videos, read the stuff, and say, "Yeah, I want to take action on that." And you've probably seen things like this on a federal level, right? Where some you get an email that says, "You know, you need to call your legislators. You need to email." Um, this is going to be on both a federal and a state leg level, and as well, I'm going to build in a mechanism to to do this on a, uh, a local level too. So if you want to get after your city councilors, you'll be able to do that as well through this. And I'm starting this website. It's going to go live. It's actually a little kind of placeholder, and I'd love you to sign up, so I'll let you know when it's actually live, which is probably going to be in August. Um, uh, but, um, you know, I think it's, it's got a good potential to help get people, because there are millions of people who believe in uh, freedom and liberty and, you know, get the government off our backs and uh, out of our wallets and out of our houses and out of our lives and uh, there are millions of us across the country. But I think there is not a good mechanism, particularly at the state level. Do you know who state legislators are? I don't. No one, no one does. They just do what they do. They run hundreds of bills through New Hampshire every year. It's unbelievable the number. I think it was over a thousand bills last year and they turned down most of them, but we don't know what they're doing. And you know, I wanted to build a mechanism that would allow people to find out if there's something important going on, and to easily take action on it. You know, know who to call. You know, click on this button, tells you who to call, tell, or, or gives you an example email. You can just email them all at once. Email blasts, it's all free. Um, so um, I just wanted to give out some cards here, and you know, pass them out, and hopefully, uh, if you want to give some to some other people, take a few. It's, they're they're free too. So. There you go. I have one already, thanks. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> with regard to fluoride, we're all still uh, kind of alive here, so don't get too depressed. It hasn't killed us yet, but it's not, it's not good for us. I think, um, like I said, there are certain, uh, you know, the, best, the best information I've found on fluoride is, is if you want to read more, is an organization uh, called Fluoride Action Network, and uh, their website is fluoridealert.org. And uh, this this organization is run by um, <clears throat> run by a guy named Paul Conant, who's a chemistry chemistry professor. Yeah, he wrote this. He wrote this book. He travels around the country. Travels around the country. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the charts a lot of the charts are on their on their website as well. So if you go to FloridaAlert.org, uh, you don't have to spend any money. You can get a lot of this information. There's tons of information on there. Now, any other questions before we wrap up? Now, what was that? Al Did you say the Alcoa? I forgot the name of the cheapest two hundred dollar filter you're talking about already. I'm sorry. Berkey. Berkey? The cheapest the filter? Did you say? Oh, there was a l activated alumina. Activated alumina. I activated alumina. Yeah. I have a comment. Um, yeah. I went to a seminar a short while ago, and going back to brittle bones and breaking hips, um, it came out in that seminar that most most broken hips are not caused by the fall. The fall is caused by the broken hip. Hmm. Mm, that's then interesting. The hip breaks and they fall. Brittle. Wow. The majority of them are. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Ever heard of Dr. Justin McCullough? Yeah. Yeah, he's. Uh, Mercola, yeah. He had a great article about fluoride just yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago. He talks about it a lot. Berkey. Yes. Yeah, he had a great article. That's the name of the company. Anybody else? Come on, drinking too much fluoride out there? <laughs> Oh, is, uh, is that a rumor about uh, either the Nazis or the Russians using fluoride? Is that, is that true? I don't know. I've okay. tried to find sources for that, and I have been on it. There's a, uh, there's a claim that's been made as kind of a, I don't know, an Internet rumor <clears throat> that they, both the, uh, the Stalin used um, fluoride to keep, to keep people uh, sort of sedated in the prison camps. 
That's true, and uh, and that the Nazis did as well. But I, I've never been able to substantiate that. It came. I found out where it came from. It came, and I, and I read this sort of secondhand. It came from a after World War II, there was a um, a U.S. chemist who was sort of debriefing some Nazi chemists, and he claims he was told verbally by the Nazi chemist that they were doing this. So that's where it comes from. So it's very hard to substantiate that. Maybe it's true. Check the bone jar. They probably could have. They probably could have. That's disgusting, I know. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, you might have already talked about this, but is there a good way to filter the chloride out of the water? Yeah, there, I, don't, I, think, I don't think there are any great ways, but the ways I know of, there's a filter called activated alumina, and it's the substance that's in the filter itself. Okay. Um, a Brita filter or a charcoal filter does not filter it out. Um, <clears throat> activated alumina, something called bone char, which is basically uh, charred uh, cow bones. Maybe you'll get mad cow from that, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, I'm not selling those, I'm not buying them. And then the third kind is uh, reverse osmosis filter. And they take out most of it, like 90%. Yeah. I'll say this well water. Probably depends on your well. Get it tested, I think. I would say get it, you know, get get your well water tested and get a fluoride test for it. Some areas in New Hampshire, I think, have relatively high levels of fluoride. I think most don't. Naturally, you know? Plymouth has four parts per million naturally. Plymouth, New Hampshire. Plymouth does. Okay, so that's really high. So yeah, it's worth getting it tested. I didn't know that. They take it down to the lower poisonous level. So, <clears throat> thank you. Please go to 1776action.com, sign up, fluoride help me out here. I'm trying to get this going. And fluoridefreeportsmith.com. Thank you, guys.